Whether you prefer the complexities and role trinity available to a tab targeting MMO combat or more reactive and immersive action combat, you'll probably experience both at some point. Regardless of which style a game chooses, how well it's done can make or break it. And if you break it, you'll be opting for automation rather than combat. But Guild Wars 2's hybrid action and tab target combat really makes you want to play it yourself, and it also lets you choose which style you prefer, which is nice for letting you play the way you want. But if you really want to get the most out of every skill or to be able to play every build or class, you'll use both methods when the situation calls for it. So I'll be showing how each combat mode works in Guild Wars 2, what settings you can optimize them with, and how to combine them to get extremely fluid and efficient gameplay. Let's start with tab targeting. Most skills in Guild Wars 2 do not need a target to be cast, but it's often better to have something targeted most of the time because it can help you to land your skills or just give you more information about the target. But there are times when you'll want to de-target them. The most obvious way to find your target is using the tab default keybind. Just like on a web page, it will highlight a target in a specific order. So the nearest targetable enemy in front of you will be selected. Then if you tab again, it's the next and so on. If you detarget by left mouse clicking in open space, then pressing tab will restart the sequence at the nearest target. If you're only fighting one enemy, then tab is the obvious way to target because it's so fast and requires no aim, but you won't always be fighting one enemy. Clicking to select targets can be useful as well. Unlike in other MMOs where you have to click on their name tag and the UI can be organized to see which target is which, you have to actually click on the character in Guild Wars 2, which can be difficult if there are many character frames overlapping each other. Combining left click when there are enemies for precise targeting and tab for quicker but less precise targeting when there are less enemies to tab through will allow you to find who you want to target much faster. There are also keybinds to target nearest enemy or even ally, but because targeting allies isn't really necessary most of the time as a support because most support skills use proximity rather than targeting, you won't need this. Left clicking in open space to detarget can be a bit hard when your screen is filled with targets you could accidentally click on. To avoid this, press the escape key or you can go to keybinds and set the lock auto target keybind, which essentially will detarget your current target. Don't get this confused with the auto targeting option. You should definitely disable auto targeting so you have control over what you target. No, 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 no. Detargeting also allows you to change the direction of your skills for better mobility or aim. Some skills move you in a direction, but will do so in relation to a target. So if your skill moves you backwards, but in the direction away from your target, you have limited options on where you can move if you always have them targeted. However, if that skill can be used without a target, you can face away from them by turning your camera with the right mouse button or using the about face technique, which I go into more detail about in my mobility guide, which is linked in the description. That skill can now be used to advance towards your enemy rather than retreat from them because of detargeting. You can disengage from a fight using a leap skill by detargeting it. So by choosing or not choosing to target an enemy, you can swap between tab target and action combat styles for your skills, which gives them a lot more versatility than you might originally have imagined. Also for skills that have a forward trajectory, shooting them at your target will shoot it in their direction, but if they're moving in a different direction, they may already be out of range by the time it gets there. By detargeting and shooting it ahead of them or in a straight line behind them, you can vastly improve your aim on some of these abilities. Skill retargeting is an option you should enable which allows skills to transfer their aim to a different target halfway into the cast. If you're shooting a volley of arrows at the target and they start blocking, you don't want to waste it, 
so you can continue the attack to another target by tabbing or left clicking to a new target. Which way you're facing can also affect how your skills work. Many skills can't be cast without facing the target, but may be cast without a target. That means you can start casting it while facing another direction, turn with the right mouse button, and retarget with tab to finish the cast. Now some skills which target an enemy will automatically move your character to face the target and even follow the target through long channeled skills, but if you want to move in a direction different from the way you're facing, you would interrupt that cast, or you'd need to strafe or backpedal to keep moving while still facing the target. The issue with that is that movement has different speeds depending on the direction you're facing as well. Forward or diagonally forward movement is the fastest. Strafing sideways is a bit slower, and moving backwards is the slowest. So you can see how having to face your target for some skills can limit your movement. Because every skill has a different range and targeting requirement, to get the most movement while still attacking your target, you'll need to swap between strafing, backpedaling, and running directly away from your target. You can even stand still, let go of your mouse, and many targeted abilities will automatically turn you to face your target, making it much easier to land abilities when you minimize your input, of course at the cost of your mobility. Call target and take target are good keybinds to have accessible on your mouse, if possible, because you want to coordinate attacks with your team, and it's much easier to communicate that using this tool because it puts a big red mark above their head. If your team doesn't have a target up, you definitely want to put one up even if you don't know who you want to attack yet. If your team disagrees, they can rewrite the target and you can decide if you want to follow theirs. Call target is also very useful for locating where an enemy is. If you have them targeted already but don't have the red bullseye on them, you can call target on them and it will ping the map at their location. You can use this to alert your team to where an enemy is or you can use it to reveal someone who is hiding behind terrain or who you've lost track of in the heat of the battle. One final thing for tab targeting is the call and take focus keybind. This behaves the same way as call and take target, but only you will see and be able to interact with it. This can be nice for putting on allies you want to support or by having multiple targets you want to quickly swap targeting between. There's another type of targeting which affects many large area of effect skills, and it's ground targeting. These skills have a circle or a line which appears around your mouse and your skill will be aimed at that area. Often these can be aimed regardless of the way you're facing, but they can also sometimes be movement skills. Preferably, you want to enable the setting for fast ground targeting or instant ground targeting to reduce the amount of inputs needed. Fast ground targeting makes it so your skills will still show the range and radius of the skill and then cast it at the location of your mouse when you let go of the key so there's only one key press required. Instant ground targeting doesn't show the range of the skill because it happens as soon as you press that key, not when you let go of it. So instant is better for faster reactions, but it's at the cost of not being able to see the ranges of your abilities. If you're learning still, definitely stick with the fast ground targeting, but for more experienced players, they'll want to graduate to instant ground targeting. And if you have instant ground targeting enabled with skill retargeting, you can even change the location that skills will be cast at midway through the cast, whereas with fast ground targeting, that location would be locked at the start of the cast. This, of course, gives you better aim against moving targets, since you can follow them with your mouse closer to the moment that skill effect lands. You also have options to make these ground targeted skills easier to aim. If you want to cast ground targeted skills at your feet, you can hover your mouse cursor over any UI element like your skill bar or the minimap. Sometimes there's terrain that you can stand on but cannot teleport through due to no valid pathing. You can detarget tab targeted port skills to cast them at your feet or hover your UI for ground targeted skills to put them at your feet in these situations. This does mean that skill clicking is a viable way to perform this technique but I wouldn't suggest you do that, would I? 
Lock ground target at max range lets you push your cursor out as far as you can and that skill will always be cast at the maximum range. So if you want it to go as far as you can, you don't need to waste time finding the exact range. Just flick your mouse to the top of the screen and then cast it at max range. Another option is snap ground target to current target, which can be nice for builds with a lot of ground targeted skills because it will automatically place your ground target underneath whoever you're targeting. Having to aim them non-stop while also managing your positioning can be a bit taxing, but because you may want to aim these skills on moving enemies, this may not be the best always. There is a keybind to toggle snap ground targeting to current target so you can swap between using specific skills like for example engineer grenades are really useful to snap ground target because of how much you can spam them and they can be a bit hard to land but if you want to cast an elixir on yourself the snap ground target would throw them at your enemy which you don't want to do. There is an action camera mode which allows you to control your character movement and camera at the same time to minimize inputs required. This means you can always move in the direction that is fastest while still having the ability to move your camera. Action camera is great for beginners with not a lot of practice in the movement of the game or mechanical limitations. The issue with this is you lose the potential of using ground targeted skills without also moving your camera. You can't target enemies with your mouse cursor anymore and you lose the ability to look around independently from your character. This removes the potential to use some of the previously mentioned techniques, makes you less accurate when aiming, and even forces you into tunnel vision. Action camera is sort of like training wheels. It's good to start with, but very limiting later on. Can you still use it to be successful? Absolutely. You can configure the game to be convenient for you and the most important thing is that you're comfortable. But if you've ever tried to optimize your keybinds, you'll know that it's very painful to relearn keybinds, but very worth it if you practice that new muscle memory. All of these techniques are why Guild Wars 2 combat is so immersive and reactive. Positioning is so important and therefore requires you to move constantly, but then you need to employ a different technique to land your skills depending on the situation. Using free camera with the techniques mentioned earlier and some practice will feel much more rewarding than action camera. But that's just my suggestion. You find what makes you enjoy the combat of Guild Wars 2. And if this video helped, then leave a like and subscribe for more. Share the video to others that may be interested and support me on Patreon if you want to go above and beyond. And I will see you all next time.